हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल पैथोलॉजी मास्टर होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर पार्थ गोस्वामी एंड टुडे आई विल टीच यू हाईलाइन चेंज दिस इज अ टॉपिक फ्रॉम द सेल इंजरी नाउ बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माय पर्टिकुलर डिस्कशन ऑन हाईलाइन चेंज आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सी द वीडियो रिगार्डिंग द रिवर्सिबल सेल इंजरी फर्स्ट टू बेटर अंडरस्टैंड द हाईलाइन चेंज राइट ऑल राइट दिस वीडियो वॉज पोस्टेड बाई मी बिफोर फ्यू डेज ऑन दिस चैनल सो लेट स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन ऑन द हाईलाइन चेंज so guys you know very well that whenever there is any injury or stress to the cell right the injury can be in the form of physical agent chemical agent radiological agent etc then what happen your cell will get injured right and initially you will have the reversible cell injury initially your cell injury will be reversible right but if the injurious stimuli persist for a long time right if it persist for the long time or if it is very severe then what happen your reversible cell injury will be converted into irreversible cell injury which is a point of no return means the cell cannot revert once it undergo irreversible cell injury the examples are necrosis and apoptosis now we have discussed regarding this reversible cell injury in my previous video guys in that video i have discussed that whenever there is a reversible cell injury to the cell there are certain morphological changes in the reversible cell injury right in the reversible cell injury there will be certain morphological changes so as we have discussed the first morphological changes is hydropic change right okay second one is fatty change right all right third one is your hyaline change right all right and then fourth one is your mucoid change so guys in my previous lecture of the reversible cell injury i have covered the hydropic swelling and fatty change now we will discuss the hyaline change that is a, that is the third morphological changes in the reversible cell injury so guys this hyaline change is a very uh, non specific word right it's a non specific change in case of a reversible cell injury what do you mean by hyaline change okay hyaline change means a proteinaceous material deposition it is nothing else it's a proteinaceous material deposition right okay now when you stain the reversibly injured cell means you stain the any tissue with the hni stain right hematoxylin and eosin stain then it will look eosinophilic glassy and homogeneous right so this is your hyaline change if in the stained tissue section you see the eosinophilic homogeneous glassy structure then it could be hyaline material deposition it's a proteinaceous material deposition right usually guys uh, it is seen only in the pathological condition right mainly it is seen in pathological conditions we will see which are that condition in which hyaline deposition will occur right okay a certain material can look like hyaline change right that is the fibrin material and the amyloid deposition looks similar to like that of hyaline change but it can be differentiated with the special stains right Okay so guys that was all about the introduction of hyaline change now which are the types of hyaline change this hyaline change means hyaline material deposition can occur within the cell right it can occur within the cell or it can be outside the cell right okay within the cell if hyaline material is deposited then it is known by the name intracellular hyaline deposition right and if it is outside the cell then obviously it is called as an extracellular hyaline material 
deposition right so if hyaline material deposited within the cell then it is intracellular and if it is outside then it is extracellular okay so first we will start with the intracellular hyaline change so we will take with the first example that is russell body in case of an multiple myeloma in case of an plasma cell dyskrasias especially multiple myelomas you have the excessive immunoglobulin production right and this immunoglobulins will get deposited within the plasma cell right it will get deposited within the plasma cell particularly it will deposited within the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the plasma cell and it will look and pink eosinophilic homogeneous structure so deposition of the immunoglobulin within plasma cell is known by the name russell body okay so russell body is an example of intracellular hyaline material deposition you can see that in the diagram okay guys second example is mallory's hyaline change right the second example of intracellular hyaline change is the mallory's hyaline change that is seen in the hepatocyte of your liver right it is seen in the liver cell and it happen particularly in case of an alcohol intake so in the alcoholic liver injury you can see the intracellular hyaline change within the hepatocytes so within the hepatocytes you can see that there is a pink homogeneous material deposition that is known by the name mallory hyaline change right it is the scientific name so the hyaline material deposition within hepatocytes is known by the name mallory hyaline change so guys another third example of intracellular hyaline change is the typhoid fever in case of an typhoid fever there is a hyaline change in your rectus abdominis muscle right there will be hyaline deposition in the rectus abdominis muscle in case of an typhoid so this hyaline deposition in the rectus abdominis muscle is known by the name chancker degeneration it is known by the name chancker's degeneration that is most important mcq right okay so guys uh, this was all about the intracellular hyaline change now we will see the examples of extracellular hyaline change so guys first example of extracellular hyaline change is hyaline arteriosclerosis that is hyaline arteriosclerosis in this condition your vessel will get thick with the homogeneous hyaline material deposition it is particularly seen in renal vessels in case of an uncontrolled hypertension so if you have uncontrolled hypertension hypertension then your renal vessel can get thick with the hyaline material deposition and that is known by the name hyaline arteriosclerosis that is the most important mcq i have already taken the if lecture regarding the effect of hypertension over the blood vessel so i request you to see that video also okay so guys second example of extracellular hyaline change is your leiomyoma right it is a smooth muscle benign tumor of your uterine myometrial muscles right in your uterum you have the myometrium in which you have the smooth muscles so it's a benign tumor of your smooth muscles of myometrium sometime sometime what happen in this leiomyoma leiomyoma there will be hyaline material deposition right that is known by the name hyaline change in the leiomyoma in this diagram you can see the hyaline change right this is the hyaline change pink colored and this is your smooth muscles surrounding it okay so guys third example of extracellular hyaline change is round concentric hyaline material deposition within your prostatic gland so this is the pink colored 
round homogeneous concentric hyaline deposition within the gland you can see that these are your prostatic gland right it is lined by dual layer of epithelium particularly superficial layer is columnar epithelium so within this gland you can have round concentric hyaline material deposition that is known by the name corpora amylacea that is known by the name corpora amylacea it is the example of extracellular hyaline change it's a important mcq it can be seen in benign prostatic hyperplasia patient so guys another example of extracellular hyaline change is your chronic glomerulonephritis right in case of an chronic glomerulonephritis you have the sclerous glomeruli right it will be hyalinized your whole glomerulus will be hyalinized so that is a, another example of extracellular hyaline change okay still more one example is there for the extracellular hyaline change particularly if you have the fibrous scar right in case of an chronic inflammation you have the fibrous scar right and the scar can get hyalinized so that is also example of extracellular hyaline change so guys this was all about the hyaline change right it was a very short uh, discussion so we have covered what is hyaline change and then we have discussed regarding the types of hyaline change particularly intracellular and extracellular hyaline change with their examples and the images so hope your fundamentals will get cleared if you like my video then subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever i'm posting the new video guys thank you very much and see you soon in the next video take care